Hi, everybody. Uh, it's great to have you all here towards the end, right? So deep commitment. I appreciate that. That's excellent. So thanks for being here. I'm move over here, please. Don't yeah. stay behind. You can come up. Yeah, it's like a class. So you're, you're being told to move to the front. All right. So uh, I'm Matt German Prey. I'm not on the list, but I'm going to be moderating this panel. And I'm going to have the folks just introduce themselves. So I have Emilio and Enoch and Elizabeth. So Emilio, do you want to just introduce yourself real fast? Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I think that this is one of the, the latest sessions. Of I the think day. there's one after this. There's one after Still. this. So let's make the best out of this. My name is Emilio. I lead developer relations at GitLab. I've been in this industry for forever, <laughs> uh, far too long. Hey, everyone. My name is Enoch. Casada, and I'm part of Chaos, majorly maintain a lot of projects, badging inclusive, and also I'm a PhD student at the University of Missouri. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager, and I also work on the All In Project, which is um, part of, of GitHub, so I kind of have my feet in both camps. So, yes. Yeah, I said GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> so this is only 20 minutes for the panel, just so you know. So we, we joked about just moving right into questions now <laughs> because there's just not much time. All right, so I'm just going to give a little bit of background on this, and then I'm going to move to the panelists, okay? So the background on the uh, DEI project badging. So in the Chaos Project, we have DEI event badging, where we ask event organizers to consider a series of metrics that they could use to best center DEI in the events that they that they do, that they run. And that project has been going on for you know a while now, maybe a year and a half, and we've had maybe 160 or so events uh, get badged through that badging program. So we asked ourselves, is there a way for open source projects to kind of represent how they center diversity, equity, and inclusion within their projects. So events are kind of one thing, and projects are certainly something else. So events have kind of a time window. You know, you run them and they're over. Projects live for a long time. Um, events, there's fewer of them. Projects, there's just naturally a lot more of them. So we had to think about a couple different ways with respect to centering DEI and helping projects think about DEI uh, with respect to, to the work that they do. All right, so I do have one slide. There's, always one. There, there's one. So what we did was we were asking projects to produce a DEI.md file. And that's a file just like a, you know, a code of conduct file or a contributing file that you would put in your repository. There are four metrics. Those are the metrics right up there. And those metrics are chaos metrics where we ask the project maintainers or the project's owners to talk about how their project attends to each one of these four metrics. So you as a project, how do you attend to project access? How do you attend to inclusive leadership? So on and so forth. The chaos project does not evaluate your answers to those because every project is naturally going to be very different and how you attend to project access. And there's no real right answer for any of these. But what we do ask you to do is share this DEI.md file with your community. Share it openly and broadly. Put it on your website. Put it in your repository. And if there are problems or a community member is like, I don't think that's how we really address inclusive leadership, you can bring this up to within your community and really talk through it with respect to the DEI.md file. Fair enough. And the badging, what we do for the badging is we really just, we ask maintainers to submit their DEI.md file. And really, we're just taking a look at, is it well-structured? Is it clearly defined? Is it publicly available? Those kinds of things. So when we do the badging, we're not really looking at the content. We're just taking a look at, did you take the time to properly put together this DEI.md file and share it within your project? There, that's all like, <laughs> that's like, two years of work <laughs> in the chaos project <laughs> put down into just a few minutes. So the question then becomes for the panelist, why do we need a DEI.md file beyond the code of conduct file with respect to DEI within our projects? Um, it's a good question. I, I think in our case, it's, it's about being intentional, right? 
uh, eventually, um, when, when you try to bundle too many things together, no one pays attention to anything. So you wanna be intentional about the thing that you want to address and improve upon. And that's why I strongly believe that we need something like this. To your point, it is not about what you write in the doc, it's about the, th uh, the, the thought process behind it and you share that with the community in a transparent way and you make an effort to think about this strategically you know, and set your own goals. It's a journey, right? But if you don't start the journey or you just add that to something else, a code of conduct, then, then it's not gonna happen. There's gonna be so many other things around that what you need is this thing to stand out by itself so you can work on it. And eventually the hope is that we will not need it, but it's that we are not there yet. Yeah, Enoch or Elizabeth. Um, um, I feel like um, the code of conduct file um, is a random file that um, you need to have some content in the code of conduct file for it to be a conduct, code of conduct file. But when you look at the DEI.md file, it's a file that, be, that has been structured by a community. We're not really trying to force you to put some kind of information, but we're trying to define things that we feel um, are important to address. Um, and that is um, a thing I would think is better than a code of conduct file. Because, I mean, if I asked what would define a code of conduct file, everyone would have their answer. But if I'm to ask what would define a di.md file, at least we have some things we would use to, to define that. And um, it's the community here and people like you contribute that end up making these things. So we can't say this is final. But we say because of your contributions, you'll find this growing to 20 metrics, which yeah. is an overkill. But if it's necessary, then. <laughs> and I would just add that I, I am a big fan of this because it does go deeper. The code of conduct file is great for just you know baseline expectations for community behavior, but it doesn't give you anything beyond that. Right? It doesn't give you any information about how the community is run, how you're going to feel if you join, uh, what uh, resources are available to you as a newcomer. So, you know, it's, it's great, and I think it's, every project should have one, of course, um, but I think we can, we can do better now. You know, we're, we've got to that level where code of conduct is accepted and people get it and it's okay, so let's, let's go a little further, you know. Could you just keep it down there too? But, um like, how are the metrics helping projects reflect on on these things? Like, how are we, you know, using metrics as a reflective process and not as an evaluative process? That's a great question, Matt. I'm glad you asked. Thank you. Um, so, so clearly, these are not <laughs> these are not metrics. We, we planned none of these. I'm surprised you asked, Matt. <laughs> Um, so obviously these are not things you can get from an API, right? They are, they are deep, um, intentional areas, which you, you know, really causes the project maintainers and owners to really think about it and to really ask questions that maybe they have never asked themselves before. Like how, how do we trans transparently communicate? Do we, you know, could we do better? And I think that, that right there is, um, just having something to start with, even knowing what questions to ask and, um, again, like Enoch said, we are probably going to be adding more because this is for the base bronze level. You would get a bronze level badge, but the idea is that we will add more and more metrics. So, you know, the more that you, more work you put into the file, the the better badge you'll get, I guess you could say. So it really kind of just gives people a, a place to start, I think. Good. Enoch or Emilio? I, I, I don't think I'll defy from what she says. Because um, uh, it's like a thought process. Yeah. There, there is having a question and um, not knowing the solution, but you know there is a problem. But when you have triggers like this, you're like, oh, so these are the questions I need to answer. So you get so insightful, and then you know where to start from. You can do that. <laughs> I, I forgot. I was going to say something else. Um, so I think part of the chaos project, with what the chaos project does, is define these metrics and really. Um, develop them out. So it's not like in this file, you're just like, 
am I supposed to just, ass I don't know what this means. What does project access mean? No, there are resources that really describe what, what we mean when we say project access. And so there's also resources, there's, you know, ways you could, ways you could measure it. So the Chaos Project has really done a great job of thinking about all of the things that go into this metric. So it's not just like a, a topic. It's, there's a lot there for a, a project owner or a maintainer to use while they're developing the, their part of that DEI.md file. I'm going to add something. Yes. Yeah, please. Which is something about metrics, right? Yeah. Which, uh, I, I, maybe that's a better way to define them. Yeah, because at the beginning, it's not, it's not about measuring how people. It's uh, as I said before, it's a journey, right? This is a framework that is going to help you think about diversity end to end. You know, in a more strategic and holistic way. Yeah. And eventually, what people need is that framework to help them think about it. Right? Is that hey, where are we? Where do we want to go? And is that what are the steps that we need to undertake in order to get there? And this is exactly that, is that, hey, you're getting the tools, yeah, giving you the questions that you need to ask yourself, your community, your project, and trying to understand whether you are making progress. It's not about a number for the sake of having a number. It's about, hey, are we using this as a way to, to evaluate whether we are moving in the right direction? I, oh, yes, I agree with everything. So. One of the things that has really come out of this, I think, for the Chaos Project is using metrics as this like reflective process and not just an evaluation on things that have occurred in the project. So lots of times you think about metrics as like looking at age of issues or responsiveness to a, to a merge request. You kind of these post hoc analysis. These are really metrics to get you to think about things that you're doing in your project and express those in ways that are meaningful for your members. So it's been a real experience for us, I would say, as a project to, to think about metrics that way, um, something we've learned over the years. So um, so Enoch has been involved a lot in the development of the processes around chaos badging. So I'm gonna turn it over. I described it real briefly, but Enoch, could you maybe describe a little bit about how this works from just a, a work perspective? Yes, so, um, um we have uh, a website called budging.chaos.community. Um, and when you go to this website, there is a lot of information about where to find resources, about things that define um, these metrics. And um, there is a template that <coughs> is public. It's on the repository, and I'm sure it's somewhere on the link. That's right. Oh, that's the, that's the link to the template? template. Yeah. yeah, sure. So. If you or your project maintainer is interested in uh, applying for this, you'll look through the template and then see if you have the answers to every metric. Oh, thanks, Matt. You're welcome. <laughs> One slide. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happens specifically for um, project budging is it's just a small tool that we use to scan through this file once you submit it um, through our submission process on the website. So what we do, we scan the content of this file one to make sure it's not a duplicate of just the template that you got from here and pasted there. And um, we use, I mean, we use the GitHub provided API stuff. So we're not like trying to get deep into what your company is doing. And um, in the end, once we look through and you've mentioned all those metrics, um, we could use the information, the aggregate information to issue a badge depending on um, how you've answered those questions. And um, the badges we issue are like, you could put them anywhere, you could even print them and put them on your shirt. We do not care how you use them. But in the end, we just hope that you use this badge to reflect on how inclusive um, you are. And I should say, how this is different from the code of conduct is that this badge expires, but the code of conduct never expires. It's the maintainer to be like, oh, this looks so old after several years. <laughs> so this takes one year and you're like, you need to review it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Enoch. So uh, remember I said this is a 20 minute panel. We have four minutes. So I'm going to, I do have another question, but I'm going to open it up to see if people have questions right now, because I think that would be great. So yeah, yeah. Sure. why don't I, I'll come over there and I'll. Thank you. I'm interested to know, like if you've seen any changes in the community because you launched the badges initiative, like has there, maybe you have an example of a team that 
changed course or did something new because of the badge? <laughs> I was, I'm like everyone is capable of answering, but I, I'm I, I'm thinking um um Salvador would be a good person to answer that because like we're we're inside chaos and would love to hear his perspective. Well, my perspective is from GitLab's perspective, yeah. right? Uh, which is not about also some of the projects hosted on on GitLab are following suit, but I think it's the exercise that we went through, and as I said before, is that. We, we didn't take this as a set of metrics that, you know, let's go and ask the question and answer. It was a thoughtful exercise about, hey, what are the things that we can do better, you know, about, about DEI, right? Is that, hey, now that we have a framework and now that we're thinking about this is, and we have, a, well, we have an internal team, instead of DEI, we call them DIB, Diversity, Inclusion and Belonging. It's kind of the same idea, same concept. But, but we are working closely with them, building a partnership that we didn't have before in terms of thinking, how do we engage with the community in a different way that basically respects the principles that we are, we are building you know, as part of this exercise? Yeah. So that, that's a big change, right? Uh, it's, I think that the main change is that this, is, this used to be an afterthought that is top of mind now, right? And eventually, my hope is that we will get to a place where it's, it is just that it's not even top of mind or bottom of mind. It's just part of what we do on a daily basis. That was a fair answer from someone who benefited from it. Yeah. At, <laughs> at this point, we've there have been four. This is a very new project. Yeah. I mean, this is just you know within this year, and so uh, there have been four projects that have been badged so far. And GitLab has been one of those projects and has been very instrumental in helping us think through what the DEI.md file is and how projects can participate in this process as well. So to your question, like the kind of the longer term impacts, I don't think we have enough of a enough time data. Yeah, to see that <laughs> quite yet. But it's a fair question. But we need more data to our ask is that, hey, if you are part of a project, you, you have a good relationship with your maintainer, with your community, bring this up, right? The more people we bring to these, the more we will understand how we think about this. This is far from being perfect. I mean, we're evolving, we're improving, but we need help. It's just four of us, I mean, cannot basically make, make significant changes. We need hundreds of projects working with us to get this to the point where we believe it should be. Sure, that's fair. Uh, yeah, so I just had a question of uh, if it could, I'm curious to hear more of the process in between like once you've submitted and had all your thought from, from the project side on how you're going to write this DEIMD file and you've submitted that to chaos, what are the different metrics used to review? Is there like a process to see, okay, is this, you know, do these solutions make sense for this project? Are they following through on those commitments? Or is it more of like the honor system of just the fact that they thought about this is enough that they're making a commitment towards DEI? That's a good question. Um, so we thought a lot about this of like, where's the boundary? Like, where do we kind of hand it back off to the community? So all of those things, the, the follow up, the, the accuracy, the, um, how things are written, um, we, we ask the communities to kind of self self police, I guess you could say. Um, so it is the honor system. Um, and then again, because it's open, anybody can see it. If there are discrepancies, then that would be the community needs to sort that out. Yeah. Is that what you were answering? Okay, perfect. Awesome. We are at the end of time, just like that. <laughs> That's 20 minutes. So I'd like to thank the panelists and obviously they'll be here and you're more than welcome to come up and ask questions. And anyway, special thanks to GitLab and GitHub for their support in this as well. We honestly wouldn't be here if it weren't for your support. So thank you for that. So thanks everybody. Thank